Hi, I'm Brooke and I'm in 8th grade and you said if you were a Republican like Patrick, you might not make the same choices that he did. When you put yourself in his shoes, did it help you find closure to your father or have a resolution with Patrick? Great question. And I don't think it's about closure for me um, it, because I, you know, I can still feel sad about losing my father. You know. I feel sad when I hear about anyone killed um, in war or terrorism or genocide or, or homicide. And I, I don't think I'm, I'm ever going to be somebody who doesn't feel that pain when other people are, are killed. Um, so I don't think that there is closure. But what there is, is um, from that experience, is that I think the empathy started growing and that understanding. And so, like, I've met people around the world who use violence, and I don't judge them. You know, for me, it's about that understanding. And see, it's not just with Pat, because um, I also had the experience with somebody who was on the other side of Pat, on the Protestant side, and, and on somebody who was a British soldier. Um, and it showed me that really we don't have any sides. You know, quite often there's always like, the good side and the bad side, and actually that doesn't exist. Beyond that, there's just people who have different experiences to us, which we can understand. And this doesn't mean ever to condone people using violence, you know, I don't believe in violence. And, but it's about, I can always understand the motivations for it. Thank right. you. Um, hi, my name is Carly and I'm in 8th grade. My question for you was, on your website, Building Bridges for Peace, um, Pat talked about one of your earliest meetings and hearing a question from your daughter about if he was sorry. Um, I was wondering what it was like, you know, uh, he talked about them being children at that age, at the time. What was it like trying to explain everything to them, why their grandfather wasn't around anymore and who this man was? Great question, and um, um, I didn't actually tell them um, what happened to their grandfather until um, 2000, so my oldest was 10 at that time, and the reason why I haven't told them is because um, I felt like I was going to give them such a, a terrible view of the world, you know, I didn't want them to know that people planted bombs, and I was protecting them. But I was also protecting myself because I hadn't um, dealt with the emotional legacy that I had. But in the year 2000, I did tell them. Um, and it was really hard. Um, and they um, were well, the middle daughter. She, she's actually now um, 20 and about to be 21. And I'm just trying to get her work experience because she wants to be a photojournalist. And um, she wants to work with me in Northern Ireland. And we want she wants to go to different parts of the world and take photographs of people doing peace work. Um, so she's very much following my footsteps. Um, but she, out of the, the three of my daughters, was the one who asked the most questions. And I can't even remember what what I said in the TED talk, but um, she actually had three questions for him when she was like seven years old. And, and um, she's now thinking that she's ready to meet him. But for me, it was really important that they met him if or when they wanted to. It wasn't something that I was going to say that they had to do or had to forgive. And I was um, always ready to listen to their anger and their, their loss. And just because I was wanting to do this work and meet him, they didn't have to. So he never, he never came to my home. He never came to places where they were. I was very protective of, of them and of their own journey. And uh, at the same time as they wanted to know more, then I was happy to talk about it. Alright, thank you. Joe, thank you so much. Um, we're, uh, the questions were amazing and your answers were amazing. Uh, I, I have so much admiration for you um, and we're so grateful that you shared your experience with us and have uh, made time to have this conversation this morning. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the class today? Well, thank you. Um, 
brilliant, brilliant set of questions, each one of them. And I, I'm so touched that you've ha thought about and reflected and written your essays and that, that you're just um, spending time really understanding my journey and what I'm sharing. And uh, I don't think I've ever had this experience before. Uh, it's completely new to me. And I just wish I was there in the room with you and so that I could get to know you all more. And some of your questions, or all your questions, are, are just absolutely brilliant, and I hope I've answered them. You know, um, I'm sure there's more that I can say, and we're going to have more time together, aren't we, Arno? Yeah, we're, we're going to uh, probably be doing this once or twice a month, uh, you know, as, as at your convenience. So um, we're going to be very respectful of your schedule, but uh, how many projects do we got going on here right now? How many? Nine. <laughs> All everybody raising their hand is involved in a, a peace building project <laughs> that they've conceived that uh, we're going to be sharing with you as as it, they go. So wow. I think um, the next session we have, and, and what do you guys think about this? How about the next session we have with you? You guys can share uh, how your projects are going. Does that sound good? Joe, does that sound good to you? Oh, I'd love to know what your projects are on peace building. And, and if I, I'd love to listen, and if I can do anything to contribute or just give you support, I'd love to. Awesome. Well, that, that's what we'll plan for our next session. And um, we would really love it if uh, you would help share these projects with people in the UK and uh, with, with other people that you know from your travels. Yes, well, I'm going to um, be speaking, I haven't got the date yet, of an amazing school in England where the young people are doing peace work. So um, I'm going to talk to the teachers there and see whether there's a way for you to find out what they're doing. And, and if not, they, they, they could definitely hear about what you're all doing. And that I could talk to my um, the trustees of my charity and we could put something on the website as well. That would be great. Awesome. And how's that sound, you guys? You need a school in England that's doing this too? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, Joe. Well, go I'm ahead. I'm hoping to go to... Oh, um, like I'm not, I don't think I'm going anywhere very exciting um, till the beginning of next year, but you know, if I go to schools in different parts of the world, like back to Rwanda, you know, then there's possibility for them to know about what you're doing. And this is what I find so exciting, and it's also necessary, because I think to really change um, and have, you know, my dream is that war is something that, you know, is finished as a way of resolving conflict and that peace building just happens everywhere and the work that you're doing can add to that so I'm, I really want to share everywhere I go with the work that you're doing and so we can get a stronger message that you know peace is the way <laughs> awesome thank you so much Joe everybody uh, say thank you to Joe and bye Thanks, Joe. We'll talk again soon. Clap. Oh, Love clap. you. Bye.